We know that wall and ceiling insulation is important, but did you know that about a third of your home's heat is actually lost through the floor? Underfloor insulation is really easy to install and there's no reason why you can't do it yourself. I'll show you how to get it done so you can enjoy a warmer, drier and healthier home. Before you get into it, it's a good idea to get an electrician to check the condition of your wiring, especially if you've got an older house. You'll also want to check for any leaking pipes and make sure you get any repairs done prior to starting. And familiarise yourself with NZS 4246, installing insulation in residential buildings. You can find this online. Now, because you may be working close to wires, you'll need to turn off the power. And as far as safety gear goes, it all depends on what product you're using. So always check with the instructions on the pack, no matter what. There's a number of products to choose from, including glass wool, polystyrene, and polyester, which is what I'll be using today. And this green stuff blanket underfloor is actually made from recycled plastic bottles. So it's great for the environment too. Now, as you can see, we are in a studio environment. I have built a floor here, which is pretty much exactly what you would see at home. Now, the type of product I'm using is this green stuff blanket under floor. The important bit of information you need to know is this R value. I'm installing a 1.8, but basically in the colder areas of the country, you need a higher R value. It's also worth noting that the NZ building code calls for a minimum R value of 1.3 nationwide. Now, because it is made from 100% polyester, we don't need much in the way of safety equipment, but if you prefer to wear gloves and a mask, by all means, go for it. I'm only gonna be wearing goggles today. You will need a tape measure, a knife, a torch, and a staple gun. Now, the length of the staples I'm using are 14 millimeter. If you are working in a coastal environment, make sure you use stainless steel. Now, just before we crack into it, there's a couple of things we need to know. How much product we need to order and the width of the product. Now, the product comes in three different sizes, 450, 500 and 600 millimetre wide. So you need to measure the distance in between your joists. If you've got an older style house, it's very common for the joists to be quite randomly spaced. So you want to measure a few of them. In my particular situation, I have a 400 millimetre gap in between my joists. So I'm using a product that's 500 millimetres wide because as per the instructions on the pack, the product I choose needs to be a minimum of 50 mils wider than our space. So the next thing I need to work out is how much product I'm gonna need. My area is four metres by four metres, so that's a total of 16 square metres. Now on my pack it says I can get 17 and a half square metres out of that bale, so one bale is going to do me for today. Make sure you clean up all your dust and your cobwebs before you start installing. So, this is pretty easy. All we're going to do, push this up, and we're going to make sure that it's hanging down evenly on either side. And for the first 200 millimetres, we're going to staple every 50 millimetres. Now, from the corner, down 200 millimetres, we're going to come down from the top on a taper. That way it's going to ensure no air can get in behind it. And then after that first 200 millimetres, we want to staple approximately every 300 millimetres. Now when you're installing your staples, just make sure they only go into your joist, 70 millimetres down from the underside of your flooring. Never staple to the underside of your flooring itself. Okay, now that we've come to the end of our run here, I don't need a tape measure or a knife to measure and cut this. All we need to do simply, pull that up, and we're just gonna tear that straight across. So let's just get that up there nice and tight and then staple in place as before. Continue with the rest of your bale, pulling it tight between the joists, making sure there are no gaps, no sagging, compressions or unnecessary folds. So I'm just coming up to a light here. Now the golden rule with our light, we want a minimum of 200 millimetres away. So that's why I've already pre-cut this. And then on the other side, we'll keep that 200 millimetres away also. Now 
Okay, now when you are working around wires and you are putting your staples in, you want to be a minimum of 50 millimetres away from the wiring. And even though you have turned the power off, just treat all wiring as live. Okay, so when we've got a pipe that penetrates through the floor, we want to make sure that we're 100 millimetres around that pipe. So all I'm going to do is just give that a tear 100 millimetres away. Same on the other side. And then I'm just going to use my nice sharp utility knife and cut that last bit off. This clearance allows easy access to the pipe for future servicing. Okay, in the situation where you've got a butt one up against the other, all you have to do is make sure you get a really nice tight join. And all we're going to do is make sure that we double staple on either side of the join, 50 millimetres apart. Insulate the whole area from wall to wall, making sure to taper up where the floor meets the wall on the other end. Then give the area a quick check to make sure it's good to go. And finally, staple the product label and instructions to adjust for future reference. There you go. You can see that was easy as. Do it yourself and you'll enjoy a warmer house in winter and a cooler one in summer. And if you like what you've seen, subscribe to the Mighty 10 YouTube channel for more handy content or click here to watch some now.